This is about, oh, I guess we're about a half an hour before the show. People are starting to come in now. This is what happens. And I'll go in the back and I'll sit with some friends and we laugh. But uh, it's always good to come here and uh, be with the people. This is how I started comedy. This is how I'll end up. And there's the stage, lady stage. Gotta show respect for the stage. As a comedian, this is, I guess, my life. Who would have known? You know, that's a good question. I, I gotta tell you, when I, I grew up in Queens, New York, I was always a New York kid. We were very poor. Poe. Poe's the word. Uh, Poe is like when poor people come over to your house to feel better about themselves. You know, my mom was a waitress. My dad was a clerk. He traveled to work an hour and a half each way. That's three hours a day. Uh, a day. That's uh, uh, 21 hours a week. That you figure it out a year, and this was his life. And the thing that I saw him make him happy the most was when he'd be on the couch on Sunday nights watching the Ed Sullivan show, and Mom would have her legs on top of his, and they would laugh at the comedian, Slappy White, uh, Richard Pryor. And, and I gotta tell you, uh, I'd turn around being a little boy and I'd watch them smile. And I said, you know, in their lives, they work so hard. The thing that made them, I go, I think I can do this. This would be fun to do. Of course, later on in life, unbeknownst to me, uh, college, everybody wants to get out and make money and be a professional person. I was gonna be an attorney, a lawyer. I took my first class and taught torts. And I said, this is not for me. And I got an education, and while all my friends went off and became professional people, I pursued a life of comedy, and I never looked back, and I thank God every day for it. Oh, the material sometimes writes itself. You turn on television, and you see things about a guy, Wiener. Your name, first of all, if your name is Wiener, it's over. I, I mean, come on. Wiener, we'd never let him live that down if we were in Queens growing up in New York. But it writes itself, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I never thought he was the most popular guy anyway, or never a good actor. So for him to have a little baby out of wedlock with Carmelita, and the kid looks exactly like him, and they still shield his, his face, the kid's face, but then you hear him talk and he goes, yes, you are my daddy. Material like that just flows, and it writes itself, and people are the most interesting things and that I find in my life. So everyday events that I run into people, stories come out of their mouths and I interpret them. Come on, we all wanna, we all wanna hold up a mirror and take a look at each other. And that's what television does now. And that's all I do is show people themselves. My favorite part, I guess, it's just standing on the stage. My wife makes fun of me because she goes, where are you going tonight? You're gonna to see your other girlfriend, the stage? I, I love performing. And as a performer, to get on that stage and the respect I have for it, to get up there and look at people that have paid their hard earned money to come see you perform and you now give it to them, Bobby, make them laugh, make them wipe some tears, make them say to their friend, did you hit it? Make them nudge each other, make them walk out feeling better than when they came in, make them educate them to see the same frame but from a different angle. Let them see themselves based on how you your words came at him. That, ah, uh, feels wonderful. My motivation in doing comedy is, I don't know, you know, people think it's a glamour world. I'm always cutting through kitchens to get to the stage. Or places like this, it's a hole, but I'm here. Uh, but my motivation is probably, I have to say, is my family. You know, I was, I was brought up, I'm not a very, religious person, but I am a spiritual person, I guess. I was brought up God first, family second, career third. And if you put one ahead of the other, you always have to get on where you got off. And I've seen that, and I've made that mistake many times and tripped up, but I also know that what gives me the most motivation and strength in my life is one God, two, my family. I've been blessed with a, a beautiful wife, my kids, uh, I have a little special needs daughter who, you know, I must be pretty special if God gave her to me. And she 
keeps me in line. No telling where I could have gone in my life or what I could be doing. But the, my family is my rock. And as soon as I do my shows, I get home right to them because it gets me the strength for what I need. A lot of my inspiration was the guys that I grew up with. The guys that in the neighborhood who were very funny guys and they came out with fun things and we were just always wild guys and fun. Uh, after that, I think there was, uh, it's, we, I'd see my parents watching Red Skelton on Tuesday nights and he'd do his whole Gertrude and Heat clip. He'd twist his hair around and Gertrude and Heat clip and I was like, how silly for a man to be. How beautiful and fun is that? To step outside himself and not be afraid to be silly. Those were inspirations. Uh, the Ed Sullivan Show, watching comedians come on. I think, and the kids and the guys I grew up with still hanging out with them and coming up with crazy things. I, I think that still inspires. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here with Suzanne and Nick and just to be here and hang out and be silly, and this is what we do. You don't give a shit about Anthony, all right? F Anthony, you know Anthony. Anthony's a good man. Any guy that makes me push a car. Where would you like this, sir? Just a room A, 17C. 17C, thank you, sir. And with his luggage on it. And I don't know him that well. Anthony, we should move in together. You and I, Anthony, tell the wife, I met my friend Bobby.